Hey there, everybody. It's Mark at MGCPuzzles.com and CustomMadePuzzles.com. Just wanted to bring you another scrolling video today of me making a puzzle in one take using multiple cameras with good sound for a change. Finally figured out the sound situation. I'm using an old, at least a 10-year-old, maybe 12-year-old snowball microphone that I bought many years ago. Never really used it for my desktop setup at the time. But it turns out it's another thing that I had on hand, and I am actually going to be using that now as my microphone input for making my videos here on YouTube and on Twitch and on Facebook. So uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the sound quality better. If you are, please leave a comment. Make, let me know what you think of it. I'm going to blend in some music, and this microphone has some pretty cool stuff in it. It's got a directional feed directly at my mouth here or this general area as I go from left to right you won't be hearing me fade out so much any longer and it has a microphone that also in the back of it and it looks like a snowball really literally so this is it right here kind of pointing at me and if you look behind it you'll see this screens there and in front of it so uh, anyway that's that's the microphone we'll be using and um, I hope you enjoy the sound quality of the video in addition to what you're watching. So let's go over to my split camera mode and uh, we'll start making the video for you. I'm going to crank on some music. This is the uh, video or the uh, the image that we'll be cutting today. It's a lovely little, uh, I don't know, looks like very uh, French impressionistic uh, with very broad brush strokes. But it's a lovely image and we're going to carve that into probably about a 90 piece puzzle. So let's get going. And you should be able to easily hear me over the music because I already gave this a couple of tests and I think it's going to sound pretty decent. So this is all royalty free music, by the way. So uh, no copyright infringements here. And you'll be hearing some of these songs until I get some new ones for a while. So I love cutting to music. I'm doing a sculpting edge here. turn that down a little bit so I wanted to tell you that this is a really del delightful way to increase the difficulty of your puzzle when you're making a puzzle you just create a nice even pressure and then just kind of just rock the puzzle image back and forth in a nice steady motion much like a pendulum If you're not already a subscriber to my channel, I hope you liked my video and videos enough to hit that subscribe button down here below the video and click on the bell. I try to put out content every one to two days. And additionally, if you like this video, and if you think the sound's doing good this time around, after my last couple of sound failures, please click that like button. That'll let me know you guys are liking it, because my other videos were getting less than 10% likes for the amount of views. Not too easy to do color line cutting in this particular image. You can do a little bit, like right here. But because of all of this impressionism, it kind of makes that rather difficult.
All right, now we're going to take this away, and we're going to introduce that. Those of you that have seen my videos before, you know that I like to reassemble as I cut. Impressionistic art is a little bit tricky to cut in that the blade almost goes invisible on you as to where you have cut. So you really kind of have to pay attention to what you're seeing or have a reasonable amount of experience not to cut back over your previous cut line, which would be absolutely disastrous. If any of you out there have any questions, please put them in the comments area below and I will definitely address them. But also, uh, if you have any ideas for what you'd like to see me do in a video, I would absolutely uh, love to see that and if somebody does have a cool idea for a video that I can make, I'd really like to make it and uh, let you all see that. So feel free to make those comments down below as well.
for anyone seeing this video for the very first time, uh, the wood that I'm using is one quarter inch thick or seven millimeter thick birch wood from Finland. And the blade that I'm currently cutting with is seven thousandths of an inch thick with 33 teeth per inch. And uh, the depth of the blade is about 12 thousandths of an inch. So human hair is about four thousandths. So this is about roughly twice the thickness of human hair. And although this blade is way too fine to do any severe damage should you touch it with, a, with your finger under these conditions, it will give you a bit of a cut if you're not paying attention, but no worse than a really bad paper cut. be curious real quick I'm kind of wondering here you know pretty much everybody who's ever done a puzzle has done a cardboard puzzle but I'm curious how many of you have actually solved and worked on a hand cut wooden jigsaw puzzle and I'm not talking play school I'm talking along the lines of what you see me making here in the video Make a little comment down below, please, and uh, let me know. I'm just kind of curious. I imagine that the percentage will be rather low, but uh, well, maybe I'll be surprised. And an additional question I have is, uh, current volume of my music here in my shop is about three and a half out of ten on the volume scale and uh, since I am going to play music on a lot of my videos I'm just kind of curious is this is this volume level uh, good for you or do you think I should crank it up a little further I'll give you a quick taste of uh, what cranking it up a little further is I'm gonna I'm going to take it up to about five. All right, so that's five. All right, now I'm bringing it back down. I like it loud, but I also don't want to blow out the microphone and or some of you I also want to be respectful that not everybody likes the same music and I can't imagine everyone's gonna like what I like so I want you to watch the video but I don't want to annoy you with the quality of music so it'd be nice to try to find a nice happy medium I'm really kind of bummed out that I can't use the music of one of my favorite DJs because it's now a copyright infringement to do so but DJ named Monolink has some really great videos on YouTube that are over one hour long and I uh, really really enjoy cutting puzzles to his music. I might have to write to him and see if I can get exclusive permission to uh, play some of those videos and 
not get YouTube docking me for uh, for doing so. And as of this morning, by the way, 778 subscribers to my channel. So we're needing another 222 in order to go live on my videos. YouTube has a 1,000 subscriber requirement to go live. So I can't wait to get there. Hopefully you folks will enjoy being able to dial in and, and actually type chat to me while I'm working and I can read that and respond to you in real time whether it be verbally or in demonstration Now I'm going to show you after this cut a really dastardly thing to do. This has gotten a very extreme response by a few customers of mine. They thought it was brilliant, but also quite devious when I did do it. So, and actually this isn't the best spot to demonstrate it, but I will do a little bit of it. So as you notice here, we have a, a, a scalloped or sculpted edge. And uh, same over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. I got faces here, so I don't want to cut into the faces inappropriately. So, but I want to do an interlock, of course, and then I'm going to travel away from that interlock, and I'm going to basically mimic my edge for a little bit of a distance here, and then I'm going to, of course, create an interlock again and exit. And what does that cause? That causes some more false edge pieces to be within the puzzle. So, very devious little thing to do. And people will have those on the outside edge thinking they're building on the border, only to find out later that, hey, I was totally messing with them. And uh, it usually gets a, both a violent response as well as a uh, you got me response. So, I kind of like that. I'm a super nice person, but when it comes to uh, being devious in my puzzle making, I am absolutely so not nice at times. And I get pleasure out of it, so bring it on. And the question is, where does that one go? Oh, it goes right there. funny how sometimes I stump myself, I'll be cutting away and I take my piece that I just cut and bring it over to the other side and I'm at a loss for where it goes. And you'll see that occasionally on my previous videos. My puzzle assistant solver uh, also will frequently get lost a couple of pieces at a time and get kind of stressed out when she falls behind six, seven, eight or more pieces. But I tell her, I tell her, just stick to them in the order I give them to you, and before you know it, you'll be caught up. And usually, that's the case. She will be here later tonight. We're going to be working a late Sunday, making a nice video. I have an amazing puzzle that I'm cutting of a Jane Wooster Scott image called. Oasis in an Urban Jungle. It's a Halloween scene. So, uh, we'll be making another video tonight. And you gotta notice that that face is entirely in one piece. I, even with uh, this kind of style of art, I still like to always maintain the integrity of faces. And uh, if you watch the video I posted a day and a half ago, I'm going to reshoot it by the way, but when you watch that video, you'll see that uh, it's all about how to cut through a face. 
this face actually fits in a single puzzle piece. So, so does his. That video, however, is about faces that are significantly larger, that require to be cut into dozens of puzzle pieces. And there's a certain way to do it that I think is the right way to do it so that you don't detract from the uh, features of the face and maintain its integrity as best as possible. Decent music for uh, royalty free stuff. <coughs> and you might be hearing a little bit of a tiny lag in the uh, video or seeing a video lag because. Uh, the way I have my two cameras working today, because I'm having some issues with my SLR, is both of my iPhones are being the video cameras and are connecting to my laptop through an NDI source. So it causes about a two tenths of a second delay. So when you hear the music and, it, and or me finishing my cut, you'll still see a brief moment of my blade bit exiting the video. But what's really cool is when I switch to my camera that's pointed at me when I look at you guys. And I'll just show you real quick. So when I'm looking at you guys, you notice that the lip sync is dead on because this camera is actually in perfect sync with the video. But the saw, there's a tiny delay. Bit of a chilly morning here in Connecticut. Woke up this morning and when I was making coffee, and that was kind of late around 9 30, it was 27 degrees. And for you overseas, that's about minus three degrees Celsius. And we've been having a really, really mild winter. So minus three or 27 Fahrenheit is definitely. Uh, Bit of a chilly morning right now. Fortunately, later this week, it'll be around 55 degrees or plus 11, plus 12 Celsius. And I'm looking forward to that again. No snow on the ground most of the winter, so also unusual. And welcome. I don't mind that. Concern, that's the ultimate compliment. Yeah, we're 
gonna go ahead and uh, set this up on the puzzle. So, if you watch that video already, you'll know that my puzzles are laminated with a special laminate, and I I have trace cut my figural, which is the only thing that I use a template for. So we're going to do uh, we got red here. So let's go ahead and uh, kind of put a nice little heart right in there. that I can pretty easily freehand draw, so that's all I'm going to do. And then I'll make another one that's a little bit more complicated and show you the alternate way to doing it. I always like to come into a figural near a pointy spot as opposed to a rounded surface. So we're going to work our way into that and cut it out real quick. Again, I always preach that your saw blade, if you're keeping a nice, even, steady pressure on a turn, your saw blade is going to turn perfectly. So if you draw a uh, particular line that isn't exactly as uh, true as you'd like it to be, let's see what we got here, then stick with the, stick with the saw. Don't, don't stay on your line. Go offline a little bit. The blade typically uh, speaks the truth. All right, so we got the heart in there, and uh, I don't know what else are we gonna cut in here. I need to think about that for a minute. In the meantime, let's kind of just come right in next to his leg here, and we're gonna lay down some tape. And I'm just gonna glance over here for a minute at some of my my special shape patterns. They weren't where I thought they were. space to do it, so we're going to skip that one. There we go, I found a fun one. Alright, so kind of, I think it'd be kind of cool to cut a lovely little swan into here. Just like the, uh, the ugly duckling and the beautiful swan, so we're just going to do that. It's a beautiful romantic scene, and this kind of ties in with that storyline. Hopefully that uh, snowball picks me up okay here when I'm looking down closer to the saw. So if you notice, it traces. I use carbon paper or tracing paper, and uh, it traces the, the two sides. But sometimes it helps to just kind of come in and give yourself some enhancement. my way over there. And I actually like cutting figurals or whimsies as they're known in England. I like cutting them with a blade that isn't brand new if at all possible. It gives a little bit easier control. A, a brand new blade, those first few cuts are kind of fast running away on you. So when you really need accuracy on a, a figure shape piece, blade that's done a few minutes of cutting is a lot easier to control.
have our our swan. We'll lift up this tape here. All right, now we're gonna put that swan over to the side for a minute. I'm gonna go back to that in a moment. We'll do two interlocks here. I'm gonna actually work way back into the puzzle a little bit. And then we're gonna come down here and do an interlock and exit with a very, very small color line cut right along that red and that crimson right there. All right, so we got that in there now. And let's uh, bring back our swan. So I wanna just accent the feathers a little bit. So it's gonna be an accented or enhanced big girl, Lindsay. On an image like this, it doesn't stand out so much because the background or the image is kind of busy. But if you were to cut this into, let's say a blue pond or a lake or something like that, and it's a solid area of color, the, well, you can kind of see it a little bit there. Let's see. See how it's accented? You can just see the little lines that I cut into there. Off. All right, now we're going to zoom back in and you'll be able to uh, continue to see what I'm cutting. The swan goes around there, the heart goes around there. close up this edge right here. We're going to do another macro color line cut right here. Right on the bright red and the darker kind of brownish crimson. Wrap it up and over top. And then exit. Etsy shop, which I will have down below, immediately below the description of this video, uh, and you can purchase it in, I don't know, three, four, five days from now, it could be in your home. It's a really gorgeous image, one of my favorites in this style. like that that's quite obviously going to have very obvious matching pieces. I usually just give this as a sacrifice to the solver as a freebie. Instead of having a three or four pieces that share this little jaggedness to it, I will uh, I'll just give him all the whole thing. Because now I can go right back to being devious and uh, they won't pick up on it as quickly. There's one free piece as opposed to three easy ones. Does that make sense?
notice right here, that's actually the hand. So I'm kind of weaving around the fingers as best as I can. Actually, this delayed video is not too bad in that I can say something. And although I tend to speak live based on what I'm doing right in front of me, the quarter of a second delay gives you a chance to kind of catch up with what I'm talking about, or at least that's my impression. Hope it is what you're experiencing as well. Cutting away here. A lot of fun.
jazz and blues now. Notice how the cut lines just kind of disappear when I take the cut piece and stick it in the puzzle. Images like this are make the cut lines literally just become invisible for the most part. See, now I just lost my place. Oh, there we go. done because don't forget we still have that other partial chunk here on the bottom. And if anybody's wondering where my figural, my personalized uh, figural is to identify me as the cutter, I do not cut that into small puzzles. And I, I technically qualify this as a small puzzle. My signature piece goes into about 150 or 180 piece puzzles or higher, depending on the shape. 180 piece for sure, but if the puzzle's maybe a rectangular or a square for the most part, I might put it into a 150 piece, but under that, I don't typically carve it into the puzzle. getting there. Let's slide this over onto the camera a little better. So how's everybody liking this uh, three camera approach where we split the screen and you can see what I'm cutting and, and reassembling as I go and of course there's a third camera that looks at me whenever I want to dial in and talk directly and look at you or make it look like I'm looking at you. It's like right there. <laughs> hey Juan, if you're still watching this video at this point, let me know what you think of this sound setup. If any of you uh, know, Lon is a friend of mine, Lon Seidman of Lon.TV. And Lon has a YouTube channel and he's a big time techie kind of guy. He does professional technology reviews. And he was over here a week and a half ago to help me set up this system and he made a video of it. And you can find it on his channel, Lon.TV. That's L-O-N dot T-V as in Victor. And that will take you directly to his uh, his YouTube channel. And if you look back to about, I don't know, roughly the 21st to 22nd of February of this year, being 2020, uh, you can find that video and uh, you can watch it. Lon is a, a complete professional. He, uh, he really knows his stuff. So thanks to him, I have uh, now got the ability to give you guys a, a much better quality video than shooting with just my iPhone and single take, single camera, which up until pretty much this video has all is all that I've been doing. My other two or three videos that I've made using this approach, the sound has been very, very off. So we've now got this addressed. 
finally. And uh, here on out, we should have good sound whether or not I play background music. Or not. that thumbs up button and you're, you're liking what you're seeing, please do so. And the uh, earlier part of the video I asked everybody to leave me any comments based on what they're hearing, what they're seeing on this video as well as any ideas they have to uh, give me for what kind of videos they might like to see me make in the future. I'm more than happy to, uh, to listen. And if I can, uh, I will absolutely uh, accommodate any unique topic uh, video requests that I can make. If anybody out there is an artist and you'd like to email me uh, an example of your work, of your artwork that is, that I could possibly print and cut into a puzzle, here on my channel, feel free to do so. I'm not saying that everybody that might send in art, uh, I, you know, will be the art that I select to do it. it has to be uh, something I think will make a great puzzle. But if I like your art and uh, be happy to give you uh, a link to your website or to your blog or to uh, your YouTube channel, if you're an artist that has a YouTube channel. All right, so there we go, folks. We have uh, finished our puzzle, and now we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to create a scene here. Let me just, uh, oops. I want you to see that and, why isn't that, oh there we go. We're going to go to uh, table, setting up a camera real quick to zoom in on just the table. Hit OK, and we're going to add. NDI source, we're going to pick that iPhone 8, hit OK, and there we go. I want you guys to be able to look at that nice and close up. These little tape marks here and on the left and top, that kind of lets me know where that other camera was specifically looking uh, when I was making the video so I don't accidentally start wandering off course too far. It's easy to do when you have a large black area to your left to rest your puzzle on. All right, folks, well, I'll stop rambling for now. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this puzzle, and let's uh, just real quick kind of flip it over so you can kind of see the backside. So that's the reverse side of the puzzle. It's kind of rough a little bit right now if you look close. But I will hit that with a sander. And I made a whole video on how to sand these puzzles. If you go back about two weeks, you'll find that video. It's, uh, it shows you the Irish uh, shamrock. And that's the video to watch about sanding. So let's turn this baby back over one more time. And there we have a nice completed puzzle. My estimate is this is about 90 to 100 pieces and I will be posting this on my Etsy while this video is uploading. So uh, if anybody would like to purchase this puzzle, feel free to do so. You'll find it on my Etsy wall. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Uh, it was a pleasure to cut this video for you and uh, see you in the next one. Have a wonderful evening.